Hey everyone, it's Flackfire. Battlefield 1 finally has a proper campaign trailer, and it's phenomenal. This is everything I wanted in a World War I video game. It's gritty, it's shattered, it's superb. The developers have also announced the campaign will follow several protagonists in a series of war stories. As always, I'll be breaking down the trailer to point out some information you might have missed and providing some historical background on the situations facing the game's protagonists. If I don't mention a weapon or a vehicle, I've probably mentioned it in a previous video. So, let's get started. In this shot, some German soldiers are rushing a British tank Mark V. These little extensions of the tracks here are called spuds and help tanks claw their way out of unfortunate situations. This soldier is equipped with the same armor as the multiplayer Sentry Elite Pickup, which means we'll be fighting the occasional heavy enemy in the campaign, too. The Tank Mark V appears to be disabled and smoking. This represents a golden opportunity for German soldiers. Germany did not have the same industrial capabilities as the Entente powers and thus relied on captured tanks, or Beutepanzer, to strengthen their fighting forces. Information data mined from the beta also reveals Beutepanzer as a camouflage scheme for vehicles. The soldier here is armed with a Vex flamethrower, which could be employed effectively against early tanks. This scene probably takes place near Cambrai in 1918, which is the setting for the single-player mission Through Mud and Blood. Early tanks were very unreliable, and repairing a tank in combat often required exposing yourself to enemy fire. This German soldier is wearing a Pickelhaube helmet with a cloth cover. The cover reduced the visibility of the helmet in combat since it had many parts made from shiny metals. Not exactly a smart decision. Regimental numbers were displayed on the front. This is Edwards, one of the several soldiers you'll be playing as in Battlefield 1. We've seen him in previous trailers, but here he's armed with a Mauser C96 stored in a detachable stock. Edwards isn't a longtime soldier or elite infantryman, he's actually a former chauffeur, which may explain his white gloves. This soldier picks up a rock as a weapon. When the two sides met in the trenches or no man's land, a hand-to-hand -hand struggle often ensued, with both sides using whatever was available. The soldier holding the rock is probably a member of the Harlem Hellfighters. While the Adrian helmet shown here was standard French issue, the Harlem Hellfighters wore Adrian helmets when assigned to the French in World War I, though they kept their American uniforms. During World War I, Germany largely replaced the Pickelhaube helmet with the Stahlhelm. The version shown here includes the Stirnpanzer, which provided additional armor protection and was primarily used by assault troops or snipers. If you've ever wondered why German helmets have the little horns on them, now you know. We finally get our first look at what is probably a French soldier in Battlefield I. DICE confirmed their presence in the campaign earlier, but it's nice to finally see them in action here. You can even see the regimental number on his collar. In the absence of weapons in close quarters combat, soldiers would use their bare hands. This brutal takedown reflects the desperate conditions of trench fighting. I don't think we'll see unarmed melee combat in multiplayer, but it would be an interesting option and would probably result in slappers-only servers. This is probably the first time Edwards has seen a tank, and I love that DICE is trying to capture the sense of wonder that would have existed in such a moment. Tanks are part of our culture now, but until World War I, they didn't exist. It must have been equally awe-inspiring and terrifying to see them for the first time. This gives us a much better look at Edwards C-96 and its compact storage abilities. Here, Edwards appears to be shaking the hand of the mechanic that we saw earlier in the trailer. I'm not sure if this is an Easter egg or part of the plot, but on the hull of the land ship, someone has scrawled Faith, which may reference the character from another electronic arts game, Mirror's Edge. Naturally, it may also be there because one of the tank crewmen is religious. This is probably a Bristol F-2 reconnaissance aircraft. The aircraft is British, based on the roundels. These kinds of aircraft require two men to operate, one to fly and the other to take photos and record notes. One aspect of the single-player missions in Battlefield 1 is centered on the relationship between these two crew members. Here's a better look at the Bedouin rebel protagonist you'll play as in one of the Battlefield 1 war stories. This soldier is integral to the Runner storyline, which has now been confirmed by DICE to take place during the Battle of Gallipoli. He's likely an Australian soldier and appears to be holding an Enfield rifle with iron sights, which hopefully means we'll have that as an option in multiplayer. Minor detail, but I'm happy to see DICE got his slouch hat right. 
since the other character models have the brim pinned on the wrong side where it would interfere with rifle drills. In this shot, the photographer, who we'll call Westy, asks the pilot to get him back in one piece. Unfortunately, the average life expectancy for pilots in World War I was just 17 days, and reconnaissance planes were major targets. Their precious photographs and notes could save or cost thousands of lives, painting a huge target on them. Interestingly here, the pilot is American. Most American pilots flew in volunteer French squadrons like the Lafayette Escadrille. I'm not sure why he's flying for the British, but I'd imagine this is pretty important to the storyline. And things do not look good for Westy here in this shot. It's clear the plane has crashed in no man's land and the pilot is supposed to kill the photographer. Just as photographs and notes contain sensitive information, so do people. Perhaps Westy is in possession of some very vital information that cannot fall into enemy hands. In this scene, the Bedouin rebel is speaking with T.E. Lawrence, the famed Lawrence of Arabia. DICE has confirmed we will see this historical figure in Battlefield 1's campaign, so I suspect that is who is represented here. Here we see the familiar armored train from the Sinai Desert map, only it's toting a very large railgun. These guns brought the tremendous power of naval guns to inland warfare and were used pretty extensively during World War I. In this shot, an Ottoman officer has been captured by the Bedouin rebel, but still shouts of the unstoppable progress of machines. In a way, this statement reflects the resistance of the Bedouin semi-nomadic culture to modern society. In the background, the Bedouin rebel holds up a book, which I assume plays an important role in the story. Judo Chop here we get to see the massive railgun firing, plus a nice visual for the amount of recoil generated from the gun. In this shot, we can see the Bedouin rebels standing in the flames of what was probably a civilian camp. Nearby, there's a body, presumably someone of personal importance. The Bedouin rebel is wearing a jambia in her belt, which we know is an available melee weapon in Battlefield 1. The next few scenes show us some more of the characters we've already seen, but it also shows us London. London was the site of several Zeppelin raids during World War I, and its inclusion in the game might mean we'll see a mission set during one of these raids. The ship present here is a dreadnought battleship, possibly the HMS Iron Duke, though I can't say which class or ship for sure. In this shot, we see what is probably an Italian soldier suiting up for battle in thick steel armor. The helmet design is different than the multiplayer Sentry, and Italy's elite troops, the Arditi, were known to use such armor. In this shot, when Edwards yells, run, he's actually attempting to start the disabled tank. Here's a look at the ammo racks for the tank's six-pounder guns. Here's a look at the levers used to steer the tank, and it's clear Edwards is at the controls because of his telltale white gloves. This shot showcases the wonderful night lighting capabilities of the Frostbite engine. Hopefully, this also means we will have night maps in Battlefield 1's multiplayer if they are present in the game's campaign. Notice the spotlights in the background here. This was a time before radar, so enemy airplanes and zeppelins had to be visually identified using such technology. Here we see troops disembarking from landing craft, presumably on the beaches near Gallipoli. These landings began early in the morning, which suits the time of day scene here. Landing craft in World War I were little more than small boats, unlike their World War II successors. We also get to see our first glimpse of snow in the Alps of Italy. I would really enjoy fighting in the snow on the ground in Battlefield 1, so hopefully DICE gives me that opportunity. In this shot, the airplane flies over a large fort manned by German soldiers. There's a stationary turret visible, plus some very large warheads. There's a good chance this may be one of the mountain forts on Monte Grappa. I'm also going to ignore the fact that this maneuver would likely have resulted in little usable photos simply because it's awesome. In this melee of aircraft, there's also two Zeppelins visible in the background, further strengthening the idea that we will see London bombed in Battlefield 1. For this scene, I think we're actually on top of one of the Zeppelins while the one next to it bursts into flames. Unless the protagonist somehow landed on the Zeppelin, there's a good chance Battlefield 1 may feature some espionage and sabotage. This shot probably takes place inside a bunker or a fortress. The weapon used here is the Stanschütze Hellriegel, which we've seen in a previous trailer. I don't recall if we were able to do this in Battlefield 1's beta, but it does appear the flamethrower tank can be damaged to the point it explodes with a devastating effect. 
Here's a look behind the mask of the Italian soldier we saw put on the armor earlier, and it looks positively medieval. In the background here identified by their blue uniforms, there appears to be some fallen French soldiers, which did actually fight on the Italian front. In this face-off between soldiers, it's easy to miss the rather large pile of corpses in front of them. I love the apparent connection between the two soldiers. It's clear both are struggling with their duty versus their humanity, and it is this aspect of warfare I hope Battlefield 1 manages to capture most. And that's all I've got. I'm so excited to get my hands on Battlefield 1's campaign in October, but what are you most excited about? Tell me in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, I just started a Patreon page yesterday, so if you want to help me join the PC Master Race, there's a link in the video description. In the meantime, consider sharing on websites like Facebook and Twitter, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. <laughs>